In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to learn pointers. In this, we will study what are pointers, declaring pointers, accessing pointers, pointer arithmetic and expression, and using pointers in arrays and functions. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Let us first understand what pointers are. In a layman's term, pointers are used to point something. A C program consists of several variables that are used throughout the program execution. When we declare a variable and assign a value to the variable, we are actually naming the memory location at which the value will be stored. Here, value 10 is assigned to variable A. A is the name given to the memory address as shown. To get the memory address of a variable A, we can use another variable named pointer that contains the memory address of A. Thus, a pointer variable is a variable that contains the memory location of another variable. Let us learn how to declare pointer variables. The declaration of a pointer variable takes the form data type of the pointer variable followed by the pointer name. This informs the compiler pt underscore name points to a variable of type data type example int pointer x declares the variable x as a pointer that points to an integer data type remember that the integer refers to the data type of the variable being pointed to by x let's move on to initializing pointers assigning the address of a variable to a pointer variable is known as initialization here is how a pointer with name x initialized it is initialized by making it point to an integer variable named item using ampersand. Note, we must ensure that pointer variables point to corresponding type of data. The following example will result into an error as we are trying to assign the address of a float variable to an integer pointer. We can define a pointer variable with an initial value of null or zero. We cannot assign a constant value to a pointer variable. Now let's see how we can access a variable through pointers. A variable can be accessed using the unary operator that is the asterisk. It is also called as indirection operator or dereferencing operator. Here is an example to show the use of indirection operator. First line declares item as an integer variable and x as a pointer variable pointing to an integer. The second line assigns the value 5 to item and third line initializes the pointer x with the address of item. The output printf value of x gives us the value 1002 and value of address prints value 5. In this case, pointer x contains the address of a variable item. Note, the value pointed by x is denoted as asterisk x asterisk can be remembered as value at address. Now let us study chain of pointers. It is possible to make a pointer point to another pointer. This is called as chain of pointers. It is also called as a pointer to pointer. Here the pointer variable p2 contains the address of p1 which points to the location that contains the desired value. This is known as multiple indirections. Here is a program that explains pointer to pointer notation. Here, x is an integer variable and p1 is an integer pointer which is pointing to x. p2 is another integer pointer which is pointing to p1. The variable value pointed by p1 can be accessed using the indirection operator twice on p2. Here, the printf statement gives us the value pointed by p2 which is 100. Let us now try to understand the various arithmetic operations that can be carried out on pointers. Like other variables, pointer variables can be used in expressions. For example, if p1 and p2 are properly declared and initialized pointers, then the following statements are valid. We can also compare pointers by using relational operators. The expressions such as p1 greater than p2 p1 less than p2, p1 equal to p2 and p1 not equal to p2 are allowed. Moving on to pointer increments. 
you actually move the point of reference by an arithmetic operation. For example, on a typical machine, pointer IP would be pointing to 5 after initialization. On incrementing IP, pointer IP will move to the next 2 bytes as it is an integer pointer variable. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Now let us understand how to access individual elements of an array using pointers. Suppose we declare an array x as follows. Now, if the base address of x is 1000 and assuming that each integer requires 2 bytes, the 5 elements will be stored as follows. If we declare p as an integer pointer, then we can make the pointer p to point the array x by writing p equals x. This is equivalent to assigning base address of array to p. Now we can access every value of x using p++. This is a program what we have been trying to understand. Here, the individual array elements of x are accessed using asterisk p, while the address of the array element is given by p. To move the next element of array, we use p++. The output for this program is as follows. If we know the base address of array, we can calculate the address of any of its element using its index and the scale factor. Scale factor means the size of array data type. For example, to find the address of x3 of the array x, we use the formula base address plus index of x3 into the scale factor of int. On substituting the values, we get the address as 1006. Now let us see how pointers can be used as function arguments. As you can see, the address of the variable can be passed to a function. The parameters of the function receiving the addresses of variables should be pointers. Thus, the process of calling a function using pointers to pass the addresses of variables is known as call by reference. Let us look at C program that explains the call by reference in detail. Look at the following program. What are we doing here is passing the address of x to function change. Let us say main function is using the memory addresses from 3000 to 4000. x is a local variable of the main function. x is stored at memory location 3002 and value of x is 10. When main function is executed, function change is called and a pointer variable p is passed to change function. Let us say the change function utilizes the stack frame from 5000 to 6000. Now p is the local variable of function change. It points to x and stores the address of x. In the statement asterisk p equals asterisk p plus 10. We increment the value pointed by p by 10. Now the value pointed by p is 10. So asterisk p plus 10 changes the value of x to 20. After change function ends, the control is passed back to main, where we print the value of x, hence we get output as 20. Note that this mechanism is also known as call by address or pass by pointers. Now let's have a quick review of what we've learned in this chapter. First, we learned what pointers are. They are used to point something. Pointers in C are variables that point to another variable. Pointers hold the memory address of another variable. The general form of declaring a pointer variable is this. Next, we learned how to initialize pointers. The pointer variable can be initialized by assigning the address of another variable to it. The unary operator asterisk is called as dereferencing operator. We then learned the concept of chain of pointers. Here we saw how a pointer can be made to point another pointer, thus forming a chain. We then moved on to the various arithmetic operations that can be done on pointers. If a pointer is used to point a one-dimensional array, then an increment on that pointer by one would mean incrementing the pointer variable by the byte size of the elements. The address of every element of this array 
is calculated by the formula base address of array plus index of array element into byte size of element. Lastly, we saw how pointers can be used as function arguments. Such type of function calling is called as call by address.